Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. But that's why the time code is so darn important. Right, right, right. Oh, oh uh, sorry. You're there. <laughs> Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. And we got another awesome episode of Multicam Madness with Mark Spencer. Hey, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the last episode we did Act One, which is getting the footage in yeah. and making yeah. sure that it, it got assembled properly into right. the right angles. And now you're going to actually have us cut it. You're going to show us how to cut it together, right? Right. right. So we're looking at the multicam feature in 10.0.3. Right. And last uh, the last episode, we just talked about creating the clip, just creating the multicam clip. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to look at basically how to set it up to edit it and, and do the editing on it. And the last one, we'll look at how to tweak the edit. So we have in our uh, event browser the multicam clip. And it's selected. You can tell by the yellow outline there. And in our angle viewer, we can see by default there's just four angles that show up. Now this particular clip has seven angles, and you can tell that by this little thing down here. This is called the bank switch. Let me zoom in. Yeah, of course. Um, I zoom in. Let me just frame that a little bit better. And you can see we actually have seven angles. I can click this other bank to look at these other three. Not much to see here because this is the audio track that we're sure. syncing to. Mm -hmm. This is some uh, visuals, some visual effects. And this one is an angle that the camera was turned on and off, so it's not, uh, you don't always see something. In this particular frame, there's nothing to see. So that's one way, if you've got a lot of angles, you can use the bank switcher to go to a different bank. Uh, but with ours, if you go to the settings pop-up menu, again, let me zoom in here, you can actually show up to 16 angles at a time. So you could actually see them one, essentially one page. Yeah, so I can choose nine and get them all in a single bank. Nice. Now, by the way, it's 16 is what you're limited to per bank. But you can have a total of up to 64 separate, so, uh, so how many separate angles. In, in math in my head, so 16 uh, into 16 six into 64, 64, four times. <laughs> <laughs> You're an accountant, man. <laughs> I was a math major. Okay, good. Okay, so now here's an important thing to get. I've also taken this multi clip. In order to edit it, you need to get it into a project. Right. So I created a new empty project and I dropped it into that project. And I also trimmed it. This multicam clip down here. Because there's got just junk at the beginning. There's junk right? at the beginning. There was the slate and everything. So I just trimmed it down to start really at the beginning of the sure, song. Sure. And it treats this multicam clip like any other clip. It just acts just like any now other clip. Now your clip view is set to just like video only and you've got the smallest. Yeah, uh, sorry. You know what I should do? I was doing that because our angle viewer was so uh, tiny. But let's let's look at the audio and the video together, something like that, just so we can see what's going on there. And let's make it a little bigger. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay. Yeah. So here's our multicam clip. If you can treat it like any other kind of clip. You can. The thing is, if you double click a multicam clip, um, not a darn thing will happen. Sorry. You have to do it up here <laughs> if you want to get into the angle ah. editor to change the order of the angles or to change the name of the angles or what have you. You can go in here and, and change their names to something else. In fact, this top one is actually our main angle. Which brings up a question. So if you're changing stuff now, like changing the angle order or whatnot, yeah. because you put it in a project, when I go back to that project, those angle orders will be reflected yes. in that project? Yes, the angle order is is fixed for every project that you work in. Right. So I'm gonna go back in the timeline history out of that angle editor, and so I'm back on my multicam clip mm -hmm. in a timeline, and if we look now up in the angle viewer, this angle now says main, because I just changed the name. And actually, just to really clarify that, the reason it's called main under settings, my display name is set to use the angle. Okay? Right. And I didn't assign angles. If In the last episode, we just did a super fast thing. We didn't create angle names. We didn't use all that good metadata. We were sloppy. Right. It just sunk by uh, It sunk audio. by audio. audio. Yeah, we didn't bother. So but what I'm saying is even if you're just going to sync by audio, it's a good idea to name your angles, name your cameras, because in other uses, you'll have nicely, clearly labeled angles in the angle viewer. Sure. But you can do it after the fact. Okay, so we have nine angles. We're displaying by the angle name. Now, this is a really important thing to understand. When the multicam clip in the browser is selected, uh, different things happen than if the version in the timeline is selected. When the browser version is selected, if I move my, the mouse over, I get a little finger right. icon. And that allows me to switch so you're giving it the to finger. different angles. Each clip you're giving the finger. Well, you could say that, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm switching to that angle, okay? Uh -huh. Just by clicking on each one, it switches. And you can see that angle shows up in the viewer. So, you know, there's nothing to see just there. Just a switch. The visuals. Be able to see. It's just a switch, okay. right. However, if I select the multicam clip in the timeline, and I just move my mouse over these. A blade shows it up. It shows up as a blade. So now this is going to do what, what Apple calls a cut and switch. But I just I just call it, it really is cutting at that point and switching to the other angle. But let's so just say, you, let's just call uh, it so cut. So if it was a fishing show, it would be a bait and switch. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but this is like, this is a cut and switch. All right. Or a cut and, uh, what did they say? Cut and, uh, 
Anyway, I messed I, you up, didn't I? You totally okay. messed me up. <laughs> so now, if I'm if I'm clicking now, you'll actually see what's happening. It's created a cut, cut. point in our multicam. Clip. Because you again, just to reiterate um, my uh, silly jokes, you were in. Uh, you selected the multi clip in the project, and then you were able to yes. select the different angles. And it became a blade, and then you made yes. a cut that way. Yeah. Now I'm actually going to undo that. Um, let me hit undo. So I'm back to my full regular clip. Uh -huh. Because sometimes you don't want to do that. You want this to be active. In other words, the multicam clip in the project. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to cut. You just like right now, I don't want to decide what's my starting angle. I just want the whole thing set to my starting angle. And I think maybe I'll do this one. Even though that one's main, I think I'll do this one. So here's a cool thing. If you don't want it to cut, if you hold on the option key. It'll do a switch. It'll do a switch instead. Ah. So I'll option click. And now I'm set up for my starting that's angle. A, that's a huge tip. So it's good, yeah. yeah. And in fact, it works the opposite way. If you have the event browser version selected, uh, you can hold an option down, that's a lot, you can't cut. You can never cut that, it doesn't make any sense. So I uh, skipped that, sorry. <laughs> so, but here's the other thing. Right now, if we cut or we switch, we are, we are cutting or switching both the audio and video at the same sure. time. Sometimes that's what you want. If you've done a reality show where you're chasing people different around and, and you have a separate microphone and camera for them. For each camera. You right, each, each usually subject. you wanna to switch to each at least at mm -hmm. first. Here we have a, an underlying audio track that they were lip syncing to. So we want this to stay there all the time. Right? We never, when we cut the show, which we'll do in that just a second. That has to be. That has to stay there. Stay there. Yeah. Right. So that's what these uh, switches are here for up here. So here, this enables both audio and video. Pretty obvious, video only or audio only. So I'm gonna switch over to audio only switching. I'm gonna hold the option key down so that I'm just selecting instead of cutting. Right. And now that green indicator, that outlines tells me that this is the active audio angle. And here's my active video angle. And the color coding matches the color coding of the clips in the timeline. In the timeline, and what's kind of cool, the bank switcher, look down there, oh, wow. it's very tiny, but it shows you the active video and audio angles in the bank. Because sometimes your active audio angle might be in a different bank, oh, but it tells point. you right where it is. So now I'm gonna go back to um, video only switching. So as we cut, we'll only be switching the video, or cutting the video, I should say. So now, um, I'm gonna play. Now, one thing is, I did go ahead and do proxy. Right, right. From, did, from the last episode, we talked about proxy because you get better playback right. performance. And here's what here's why you would want to do it. If you didn't, and you've got, um, if you optimized, actually, it might work. Optimized on a on a you know a fast machine, you've got a RAID. Optimized may be all you need. And this is why I recommended earlier that you do both optimized and proxy, because if you don't have a lot of angles and you've got a beefy machine with a, a fast hard drive. You Why might be able to cut and optimize yeah. and have the, you know, not even need to bother creating proxy media. Right. But in this case, I'm on a laptop and this is H.264 media. I you want, want proxy. proxy. You want right. proxy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut the whole thing, but I'm going to start playback. I'm going to press play. And as it goes, I'm going to click on the different angles to switch to them. Before I do, one thing to mention is not only can you click on them, you can use keyboard shortcuts. One, two, three, four, et cetera? Just one, two, three, four. Yeah, and if you've got a, an extended keyboard with a number pad, it's and On a laptop, awesome. would it be function one, two, three, four? It's still just one, two, three, four. Okay, Yeah, good. so we're on a laptop now. So I'm gonna Excellent. play, and um, I'm gonna take special notice to the drummer because he's not always available, so I wanna, I wanna shoot him when he is available, or switch to him when he's available. So it's playing along, and I'm switching angles. And I'll just hit uh, the number three, for instance. Number three goes to the right. bass player. Number actually, one. be technically correct. You're actually cutting the angles. That's I'm cutting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Four. I'll go to the visuals. Would be a number six. And you can see it jumping to each of those. And I'll go to number one. And I'll just stop there. Okay. Look at that. And it's done. If we we look at our our edit there, we've got um, these edit points now. Notice that these edit points look a little different. Yes, they look like dashed lines. Yeah, normally you've got just a full dark line. Mm -hmm. The dashed lines means that these are essentially through edits. I see. They're, they're continuous. Um, there's no gap in time code between them. The black means that it actually did change. Right. The white, it's a little hard to see, but the, the, that, that dashed line is white below mm -hmm. for the audio, and that means the audio did not change. Okay. So we have the same audio track the whole time. Okay? Got so it. that's, that's, it's easy. It's yeah, easy. It is easy. And then what we'll talk about next time is after you've done your cut and you want to make some changes, how, how fast and easy it is. And I'll give you a couple of really cool tricks for really quickly changing the angles. Like you didn't necessarily make the right decision. You know, on a live show, you get what you get. Yeah, exactly. Right? But here you can treat it like a live show. When you're done, you can tweak it. Yeah, I want this angle instead of that. Yeah. So excellent. Uh, Mark, where can 
as if I didn't know the answer to this. Where can people get <laughs> multi-cam so yeah. <laughs> multi yeah. training yeah. for your so, product? Um, RippleTraining.com, uh, multi-cam, uh, full tutorial that goes in detail on how to do all of this stuff. Excellent. Yeah. It comes with the media and it comes with a, a it comes book. with the media, it comes with everything, and the ebook. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for watching another episode of MacBrick Studio. I look forward to episode three, which is he just alluded to. So thanks for watching.